back deep. The two best receivers for Clemson. Sammy Watkins, number two, and Martavis Bryant, number one. Remember a year ago in Tallahassee, special teams were a huge advantage for the Noles. So settle back, everybody. So here comes the senior from Hampton, Virginia, Herbie. Taj Boyd, he's had just a wonderful career here at Clemson. Interesting uh, just to watch him grow as a quarterback. 34th career start tonight. Such maturity. Such a big factor tonight in being able to lead this team. And Brent, I said in the open, we know he can throw the ball, but it's games like this where his feet become very important to the Clemson attack. Yeah, Herbie, you and I both know they're going to move number two all around the field tonight. They're going to line him up in the backfield. They're going to motion him out to the right. Taj Boyd on first down looks underneath. And that was down on the ground. The ball was fumbled near the first down marker on our opening play from scrimmage here. I think that ball And it was out. recovered by yeah. Florida State. Seconder was the receiver on the play, the tight end. And the official ruling on the field is turnover, Florida State football. Boy, first play of the game, we talked about the importance of turnovers. And you can see LaMarcus Joyner get his right hand in there and strip the football away from Adam Humphreys. A veteran making a big play for the Florida State defense on the opening play of the football game. Devontae Freeman will open as Winston's running back. Now it has been stopped on the field, and they're probably going to take another look Early at this. The field, there's a catch, then a fumble. The previous play is under further review. So our ACC crew, and the very first play from scrimmage, will go to replay. A game with this kind of hype, such buildup, turnovers, will play such a big part on it, a part in it. And Taj Boyd makes a great throw, clearly. Receiver, receiver Humphreys has the football, takes a few steps, and again, Joyner dislodges the football before his knee touches the ground. The ball is at the Clemson 34-yard line for Winston and the Noles. side gashes the defense strong 11 yards and near the 20 yard line before Robert Smith the safety can bring him down Florida State wants to be able to control the line of scrimmage run the football and be able to take some of the pressure off of Jameis Winston what a way to set the tone an 11 yard carry on the very first play a huge hole on the left side of the line, offensive line Freeman, not much doing this time. Battle for a yard into the heart of the Clemson defense. Jameis Winston comes into this game with a lot of bravado, a lot of confidence, second in nation and passing efficiency. The best thing you could say about him replacing a first round pick in EJ Manuel is he's protecting the football. He's only thrown two interceptions in the entire year. Martin Jenkins, the nickelback, checks into the game for the Tigers. Communication, a challenge here for the Noles for the first time all year in Death Valley. Winston goes up in the air, reaching for it is Benjamin. Touchdown, Noles. What a grab by Kelvin Benjamin. Turnover to touchdown. And that is the first touchdown this Clemson defense has allowed after a turnover. Benjamin, 6'5". He goes up in the air. What great body control and ball skills there, Brent. 
And Darius Robinson is 5'10". They found the matchup that they wanted. They took Freeman and lined him up to the far left. They cleared the backfield out, and they got a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and Benjamin goes up and makes the play. Looks like they're going to review this one as well, just to confirm. He makes his catch, and without a doubt, he gets a foot down. Maybe they're trying to challenge whether or not he gets into the end zone, but he's... Well, you gotta, you got to control the football, and he does. Finish the process of the catch. Looks like the call will stand based on the looks that we've seen there. He definitely secures the football. What a catch using his hands. The body control. Hits the pylon, the ball's across the goal line. How about Jameis Winston's? So Winston's yeah. first pass of the game. Is a 22 yard touchdown to Benjamin. And now Roberto Anwayo, who is perfect on extra points this year, stays that way. There was a flag on that play, however, so hang on here. False start, number 19. Five yards. So that little step forward. <laughs> by number 19 cost him <laughs> and he is now 36 of 36 on extra points after the fumble by the tight end here's Winston his reaction after Benjamin puts the Knowles on top. This telecast available in high definition brought to you by Vizio. And our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Two deep men are the two wide receivers for the second time tonight. Sammy Watkins would just love, would just love to get even quicker. And here's his chance. Across the 30-yard line, down around the 33. Then we go back to this touchdown. You have Benjamin right here, 6'5", and he's matched up with Darius Robinson one-on-one. -on -one. He's just going to get to the outside. Now, what I want you to watch is the movement of the safety here. Robert Smith, he's hesitant because he's viewing this receiver instead of getting to the corner to try to help out his, his defensive back. And because he's late, the 6'5 receiver, Benjamin, able to go up and over Darius Robinson for that touchdown. No huddle. They flare it out to the outside, and Watkins give him as many touches as possible. And he is close to the 40-yard line. Plays will be signaled in from the sideline. All the players will watch. Taj Boyd, of course, is the trigger man. He can change it. That comes with that experience that he's gained over these last 33 starts in his career here. A lot more freedom at the line of scrimmage. But you're right, Sammy Watkins has got to have a big night. Last year, they did a great job of containing him in this game. Sam Cooper's in a tight end. Taj keeps it as a running back. 
And he's across the 45-yard line for a first down. His feet will be big tonight. They like to run him in games like this. Go back to the LSU Bowl game last year in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. He carried it 29 times. You have a feeling at the very least he's going to get 20 to 25 touches as a really a running back trying to really affect the safeties of this Florida State defense. Roderick McDowell, known as Hot Rod, is the running back, pass protecting, far side incomplete, and that was Matavius Bryant working deep. Well, Herbie, let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. We certainly talked about one of them. Yeah, we sure have. Sammy Watkins is, is going to be moved all around. They've got to try to isolate him, and Adam Humphreys can make a lot of plays from the slot. Christian Jones, they'll move him around. They're going to put him at defensive end in this game, and Lamarcus Joyner has just amazing athletic ability. Last year, a safety. He's moved back to corner, and when they play with five defensive backs, then as they, right, they are right now, they'll bring him on a blitz. Second down and 10, McDowell's first carry. Good strong run, battling for at least four yards on it. And we touched on Watkins and Humphreys, and for Clemson to have any consistency at all, they're going to have to win some one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter outside in this passing game because Florida State will play a ton of man coverage. Now it is Ronald Darby playing bump with Sammy Watkins. Third down. This the money down over the middle, incomplete. Terrific coverage that time by the Knowles, and that was Telvin Smith, the outstanding Will linebacker. Telvin Smith shows blitz. He's lined up right in the middle, almost as a spy, and then he picks up McDowell, who slips out late out of the backfield, gets his left hand up to be able to knock that football away. Really good coverage there by Smith. Bradley Pinion and Kenny Shaw awaits the return here for the Knowles. Beautiful high punt, fair catch Shaw signals at the 12 yard line and that's where he makes it and that's where Winston and the Knowles will have their second possession of the game. A turnover allows Winston to strike from 22 yards out. 7-0 Knowles. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. Brought to you by the new Windows. Wrangler. Nothing beats Wrangler comfort. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. And Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? Well, you know the start of the basketball season right around the corner. Last night, the Little John Arena. Clemson's version of Midnight Madness. The fifth annual Rock the John event. Midnight Madness, you know the hoop season's here. Chad Abram and James Wilder. The power backs are in right now for the Knowles behind their huge offensive line. Here comes Wilder, gash on the right side. And Brent Venables has got to be very concerned, Herbie, because a couple of times there have been big gashes for the running back. Yeah, how often do you turn on a college football game and see a fullback and a tight end <laughs> in the lineup? Chad Abram that time leads the way, and this offensive line early in the game controlling things at the point of attack. about 315 pounds this offensive line it is a big one. Wilder who scored twice a year ago in Tallahassee and he's hit for a loss by Christian watch Spencer Shuey shoot the gap here he's been their leader so far this year for the linebacker spot just closing down Offensive line didn't have a chance at all because of the quickness and the instincts that time of Spencer Shuey. Third and six, and listen to the crowd. to the throw from the pocket for a first down stands tall and hits Rashad Green. How about that for composure Clemson leads the nation in third down defense they get creative with their blitz package has just enough time there and with a soft with soft coverage Green just a simple little outcut 
And Winston settles into this game and makes a great throw there on his first third down of the ball game. Abram and Nick O'Leary in from the Seminole sideline. And again, they show that power look on first down. But they're going to throw out of it this time. Try to set the screen. Almost intercepted. And that would have been a pick six. Robert Smith had a shot at it. I'll tell you, he's fortunate because if Wilder makes his catch, he's got a convoy to lead him down that left sideline. But Wilder unable to hold on to the football. It slips through his hands. And you're right. Robert Smith is right there. Almost comes up with a big play for the Tigers. Second and ten. Pocket holes again. Strikes for a first down to Green for the second time tonight. And the offensive line is yep. really holding that pocket firm so far. And keep in mind, Clemson, one of the best in the country at getting pressure on quarterbacks. The offensive line keeping the pocket clean and giving these receivers a chance to be able to execute against the Tigers in that second level. Jameis Winston seems confident. We wondered how he would react in this kind of atmosphere. Right now, he looks like a quarterback who's been out here for three or four years. He looks very confident. Confident. That's for sure, and he's three of four, Herbie. 43 yards and that 122-yard scoring strike. First and ten, and he'll keep him off balance. He's been throwing and running on first down. He comes back with Wilder, and let us check in down below with Heather. Well, Herbie, you're right. Jameis Winston is confident. Before the game, he said he's ready, and he said, no, I'm not nervous, adding, when you're in that huddle, they can't see nerves in you. Nervous is not even in my vocabulary when I'm on the field. If you're not confident in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? Guys, I'd say so far, he's practicing what he's preaching. That's for sure. And give Jimbo Fisher an assist here. Doing a really good job mixing up the play calling, the formations, being very multiple, making it tough on Clemson. Freeman checks in. Play action to him. Back to Green on the outside. And Green makes the most of it. What we've heard this week is about Clemson's defense. It's a different year. Their second year in this system from Brent Venables coming over from Oklahoma. They're playing with more confidence. They're attacking the line of scrimmage. They're getting more pressure on quarterbacks. We felt tonight we would really find out how much they've improved. And you know right now, their heads are spinning a little bit with the way Florida State's attacked them. They're going to come in with that jumbo look on third and two. Abram back in. Wilder, the power back behind him. O'Leary goes in motion. And they run behind O'Leary. And he battles for the first down. Strong run by James Wilder Jr. And certainly many of you, especially in the Tampa area, remember his daddy. He was a good one. It's sure nice to see him healthy. He is a different back. Devontae Freeman gets most of the carries. He has tremendous quickness, but when Wilder's healthy, he's a different guy. He lowers his shoulder and can pick up those tough yards, especially when it's third down and short. So the Knowles have driven 36 yards already to the 48-yard line with Wilder watching this from the sideline and Freeman, the junior from Miami, back on the field. Watch for a play-action pass. They've been having so much success running. If those safeties start to cheat up, Winston will take a shot deep. It'll be the toss play with Freeman behind Abram with crushing block. And for nine yards, they found something with the running game. Well, they are setting the edge, and the line is getting a tremendous push. And it allows the big fullback, Abram, to lead his way around. That time you saw Bobby Hart lead the way, 51, the right tackle. And when the right tackle makes a block like that, it makes it so much easier because the, back, the tailback doesn't have to worry about it until he's about seven or eight yards downfield because of that big fullback, Chad Abram. Seven running plays, five passing plays, keeping the book balanced so far. Second down and two. And Abram. Well, why not? He's your lead blocker. You've got to feed him a little bit. You and I love Give him that. some glory. Yeah, give, give the big fella, give the big fella <laughs> a chance. It's second and short. He's out there with his shoulders banging into these linebackers and defensive backs. Give him a chance to pick up a first down, a senior. Herbie, that's six first downs now in this 
first quarter for the Knowles. Three rushing and three passing. Again, mixing up their personnel groups. That's ten plays alone on this drive for Florida State. And this will wear down a defensive front. Freeman in the backfield. Abram stays there as a blocker. Winston's going to throw. Under pressure, hangs it in the air. Benjamin battling in the end zone. And I'm telling you, he almost made a second sensational grab. Breland was with him every step of the way. But Kelvin Benjamin, wow. Yeah, the big fella gets downfield. You could sense that they were setting up for a first and ten shot down the field. I thought it might be the last first and ten. They save it for this one. Pretty good coverage by Blaylin, other than he doesn't turn around and find the football, which allows the big fella, Benjamin, to almost have a chance to be able to adjust to it and make the catch. Seminole entered on the sideline, and that is Benjamin shaken up after he went down. Winston. Fires O'Leary's first catch, still moving. He has 11, make it 12 catches this year and five for touchdowns, and he picks up a first down. And when you have a great group of wide receivers, one thing that can complement that other than an awesome running back is a great tight end. How about the position of that football by Jameis Winston? Put it low and away, away from the linebacker, Anthony, where O'Leary can make the play on it and then make big yards after the catch. First down and 10, just across the 20-yard line in the red zone with a seven-point lead. Freeman behind Abram, and that time the Clemson defense jammed the point of attack. Big Deshaun Williams, one of the defenders there. This is where you want to find out who your leader is in the Clemson defense. These guys have played very well for the most part of this year. Spencer Shuey, Stephon Anthony, and linebacker. Who's going to step up and make a play in the red zone and prevent Florida State from jumping out to maybe a 14 to nothing lead? You want to keep this crowd in the game if you're Clemson, right? And Benjamin being stretched over there on the, on the sideline. Fires in underneath, and it is complete. But we're early in this game. 17 plays. We've got four different players have a reception. Three different players are carrying the football. It's been a very methodical drive here by Jimbo Fisher in this Florida State offense. Just moving their way down the football field with a young quarterback who's getting a lot of different people involved in this drive. Of course, Kenny Shaw he is the fourth different receiver. Green has caught three, and the Knowles are going to use a timeout here. This is a gut-wrenching drive. We'll see how it ends. This has been a long drive for the Knowles. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. has been controlled by Florida State's offensive line, which sets up a very interesting, critical third down and short in early in this game. They brought Wilder in. He's behind Abram. They'll run 32, and he was met by Stephon Anthony, the leading tackler on the Tigers. He jumped all over the running back. Anthony's right here. He almost looks a little confused. He and Shuey trying to get the right call, but he jumps the gap and makes the play, and somebody steps up. We said, who's going to make a play in the red zone? Stephon Anthony ends up being that guy on third and short. And it forces the Knowles into a field goal formation here. Jason Beatty is the holder. Awayo, he's seven of seven this year, kicking field goals with a long of 45. This will be a 28-yarder. Perfect. He is now eight of eight, and the Knowles build a 10-point lead.
Florida State leads Clemson 10 nothing as we continue the Dr. Pepper road to the championships and the winner tonight will be very highly thought of when the first BCS rankings come out tomorrow night and there's the freshman Jameis Winston. Bryant and Watkins again back deep. This will be the third kickoff of the game for a whale. Watkins had a return the last time, and they're not shy about kicking in the ball either. This time it's a chip shot. And fair catch right there at the 26 yard line. And Herbie, uh, what are the numbers show? Yeah, look at these numbers early. That Florida State completely controlling this football game up front. I think Jimbo Fisher again doing a good job of mixing up his personnel. I think Clemson's defense is confused. And now it's up to Todd Boyd and this Tigers offense to try to get some momentum created here and see if they can get a little rhythm of their own offensively. McDowell still the running back. Ties Boyd. Good runner. And he showed you how quickly he can seize that daylight. And he's brought down by P.J. Williams, who then gives him a hand and helps him up. This entire offense is, is built around Clemson's ability to run the football. When they start to run the football with Taj Boyd and these backs and Sammy Watkins, it sets up their play-action game where they can try to get after these safeties and try to make them pay for it by coming up and run support. Dropped incomplete, and that is Stanton Seconder. Also Christian Jones, who they've moved from linebacker to defensive end. We saw Brent when we're looking at film this week that you know, they've made that move against Maryland, and they've had an extra week to get him more comfortable moving from linebacker down to end. They just haven't had that, that athletic ability from the defensive edge spot since losing the three top defensive ends from a year ago. And obviously they broke across, and uh, Taj thought he had a free shot, so he threw it downfield. That's Mario Edwards, the young defensive end, very highly thought of, now a sophomore. He broke across. I mean, a game you and I called last year between these two teams, the defensive ends that Florida State was blessed with, Bjorn Warner, who's in the NFL, Brandon Jenkins, Tank Carradine. Their top three defensive ends with tremendous speed are all playing in the NFL now. Third down at one. Boyd keeps it for the first down. Taj Boyd running well, and uh, Chad Moore is telling us that we need Boyd to take off. Yeah. And the reason they like him to run in these kind of games is it gives them an extra man for Florida State to have to consider in the box, and also it sets up the pass game. And he'll take it middle wide open. Here's Watkins. They get him loose to the 45 yard line of the Knowles the safety Brooks and now they're hurrying up on the first down here comes the up tempo good quick read that time by Taj boy Telvin Smith vacated the zone and Sammy Watkins stepped right into it they're gonna keep it in the air and fumble scooped up into the end zone Mario Edwards Scoop and score. Instant replay. We'll take a look at it. But the Knowles are celebrating right now because the call on the field is touchdown all the way. Two turnovers and two touchdowns if this one stands. We talked about these two quarterbacks. You have a young quarterback with a bright future and a veteran in Taj Boyd, which would avoid the disastrous play. Clemson already two turnovers, as you said, Brent. They only had six on the entire year coming into tonight, and already two. And look at the leadership by LaMarcus Joyner. He is fired up. It's a replay. It says touchdown all the way. And away, oh. Adds the extra point. 
What a play by a veteran, LaMarcus Joyner, coming off the edge, off to the right. The blind side of Taj Boyd makes the play, creates the fumble, and big Mario Edwards scoops it up. Now remember, number 20, LaMarcus Joyner, has forced both turnovers in this game. He got on Seconder on a first play from scrimmage, forced that fumble. Now he gets on Boyd, and he forces the second fumble. So the All-American from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, is off to a whale of a start here tonight. I had a great conversation this week with LaMarcus Joyner about this Florida State team and its leadership and the difference he feels with the brotherhood from the Florida State team. There's Jimbo or uh, Taj That's Boyd Dabo. and Dabo Sweeney talking, trying to get this thing corrected. But yeah, it was interesting to hear Joyner say this is a different Florida State team, different brotherhood, different kind of leadership. They believe in one another. They felt they could come into this game and play well. So the last time, they had the chip shot, and the tight end Leggett came up with the tight end. Let's see if they challenge Watkins and Bryant deep this time as they build a 17-point advantage in the opening quarter because of two very costly turnovers. This time, they're going to be penalized. Reminded now that you get your NFL Sunday starter tomorrow on ESPN, 10 a.m. Eastern, NFL Countdown. Chris Berman and the gang provide the latest news and updates from around the league. Ray Lewis will sit down with his former defensive coordinator, Jet head coach Rex Ryan. And before you set your lineups, catch Fantasy Football now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2 to get your team ready. That's all tomorrow morning. And here in Death Valley, it has become a little bit deathly quiet. And oh, to the Tigers need something to happen positively for them to get on this scoreboard trailing by 17 early in the dirt well, you don't see Taj Boyd make too many throws like that this Clemson offense right now this Clemson team a bit rattled being down 17 in this first quarter This is where a veteran has to right the ship, try to get a first down, and try to get, again, a belief that they're going to be able to move the ball against this defense going. Quick throw to Watkins. Picks up the first down with a nifty move, and he's to midfield. Brooks again coming up hard from that safety spot to make the stop. Right then, before the ball was snapped that time, Florida State, they weren't disguising. They were showing their blitz. Surprise that Taj Boyd stuck with that play instead of throwing it out to the edge of the wide receivers. The play being signaled in. Aaron Smith, one of the linebackers, is number 24. Has to throw this away. He was under enormous pressure. We have talked so much tonight early in this game about Jimbo Fisher and his plan offensively. How about the job that Jeremy Pruitt, the new defensive coordinator who's come over from Alabama as a secondary coach, they also seem to be confusing the Clemson offense with a variety of different looks, showing them a lot of things they haven't shown all year, saving it for this game. And right now they have Taj Boyd overthinking this. Third down and 10. Incomplete. Crowd wants interference on. They've got the flag. The intended target was Adam Humphreys. He's got him instead on the outside. Brent, he's playing over the slot as a nickelback and has contact with Humphreys. Humphreys still almost came up with that catch with a one hand. And that will put the ball at the Knowles 35 yard line. And Taj Boyd and the Tigers will see if they can finish this off. McDowell 
breaks the daylight. And a few times we've seen a running lane for Roderick McDowell. Bounces out to the outside, and again, that's what Clemson needs to happen to get those Florida State safeties to have to respect that and open some things up for him in the pass game. They come back with McDowell for the first down. This is a very promising drive, the first of the night for the Tigers. Across the 25-yard line. Brooks is the running back. So Brooks checks in. He's a bit of a power back, young man from Jonesboro, Arkansas. And they'll need them both, McDowell and Brooks. Brooks, when they get in the red zone, because he is more of a power back, gets more of an opportunity down here. Also, can catch the ball in the backfield. Well, this Florida State defense is moving around very quickly, getting off blocks. Second and seven. Here they come on. Incomplete. And the wide receiver was Mike Williams, the freshman from Vance, South Carolina. He didn't read this right. They blitzed off the corner. Yeah, they, they brought a corner. He pointed to it, and then he didn't do his adjustment. Taj Boyd did. The veteran quarterback did. So he points to him. Sees it, recognizes it, and then he sticks with his route. He should have sat out in the flat, and he would have been able to have a first down there on second down. Third and seven. McDowell back in as the running back. Moving the pocket to the right, looks back to the middle, and he's got his man wide open. Mike Williams comes back with him. And it is first and goal for the Tigers. Nice job on third down of moving the pocket away from the pressure. Florida State's been getting after Taj Boyd. They roll him away, and a huge hole in the middle of the zone defense that Florida State decided to play there on third down. This spot on the field, Taj Boyd is a very dangerous runner. He'll empty the backfield out. He'll look quickly. And incomplete. Second down and goal coming up. Taj there, I think, just hurried it. Quarterback throws the ball low. We've seen a little erratic. It, it, it's much about his feet and hurrying the throw that creates that, that throw, whether it's high or low. He didn't have his feet underneath him, give himself a chance to make an accurate throw. Comes Joyner again. Flash. Grabs it. Got it. Touchdown. Sammy Watkins. Joyner was coming off the corner. They're not afraid to blitz at any time or any place. But that's a big answer for Clemson and their offense. They've turned the football over twice already in the first quarter. The back goes one way. There's a fake, and he has to throw it right over Joyner, who's made two big plays. And I can't say it enough. Every time you and I have Sammy Watkins, he has to have the best set of hands, just hands, and making catches of any receiver we've seen all year. Yes, he does. Catanzaro, Chandler Catanzaro, tacks on the extra point. This is the big third down. There's the young freshman that sat right there in the middle of that defense. Picked up the first down, got him down inside the five-yard line. And then Taj Boyd made a nice throw to Watkins. And look at those hands right there by Sammy. Bobbles it, able to secure it and get the touchdown for Clemson. That's a huge, huge yeah. drive here with a minute left in the opening quarter. But the question, the overriding question for Clemson, can they stop Jameis Winston and this Florida State offense? While we were at a break, you could see Brent Venables and the defensive coaches feverishly writing on the grease board, going over as many things as they could because I think there's been some confusion with all the different looks that they've had to see from Winston in this offense in the first quarter. Whitfield and Williams are back deep as the return men for the Knowles. You know, 
I think they're holding everything up because of the smoke. After the Clemson score, you can see that it's hanging here in the stadium. And uh, the referee down in the end zone is back there and he's saying, let's just hold it up and see if this air clears a little bit. What was that NFL game where they were playing in the fall that way? The Bears and the Eagles? Philadelphia Eagles and the Chicago Bears. The National Football John Madden was up in the booth, and he couldn't see anybody on the field for a while. Line drive kickoff. Williams has got it. Well, let's check in for our first update of the night, and here's Robert Ford. Busy day, Robert. And evening as well, Brent. Taco Bell Studio update. Notre Dame has lost five straight games at home to USC, but Tommy Reese to TJ Jones. Notre Dame leading USC 14 to 10 at the half. It's out there, Brent. All right, Robert, thank you very much. We've still got 45 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Herbie, I think you noticed that Abram was hurt on this kickoff return. Chad Abram, that would be a huge loss. He's had a huge first quarter. Play action. Winston going to take off. Showing his athletic ability as he crosses midfield, and he's finally ridden out of bounds by Darius Robinson, one of the defensive backs. He does enough. He, he's, he's able to make the defense if they're going to spend too much time in man coverage, looking at the wide receivers and running backs. You've got to remember that Jameis Winston can still make you pay for that. And again, the poise there to pull the ball down and take off and get yards to move into Clemson territory. Freeman. Gang tackle. At about the 45 yard line. Of course, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and you can see that the 50-yard line is painted pink here tonight in honor of this month. The players have some pink towels. Coaches, of course, have pink trims on the bottom of their shoes. And we've come to the end of the first quarter here in Clemson. Knowles lead it, and we'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. So while you were away for over three minutes, the offensive line of Florida State stood out there at the line of scrimmage the entire time. Yeah, they're like, put the ball down. We got to take a break here. Let's keep this show going. And now the skill players join them, and it'll be second down and eight. First play of the second quarter. Winston rolls the pocket to the right. That offensive line holds up as long as it could. And O'Leary with his second catch of the night. And he is across the 35-yard line before Suey makes the stop. Watch Jameis Winston. He throws this. He rolls way to the right. He throws it. Just keep your eye on the quarterback. You want to talk about why these players respond to him? He throws his football. And then he's like, let me get a block for you. I got this. I got this. Let me get somebody. Players see that. They respond to that kind of leadership. Again, the intangibles of this young freshman are amazing. First down and 10. Under pressure, stands tall, picked off at the 15-yard line. Intercepted by Breland. Bashad Breland, a junior, and there's a penalty flag on the sideline. Hang on now. Irving the lineman raising his hands. Well, we've seen two miscues by Clemson's offense. And here's the first one for Florida State. It's hard to tell whether it's the freshman or his wide receiver here, Kenny Shaw. Kenny Shaw breaks to the inside and back to the inside. And it makes it pretty easy for Breland to see the football throw and make the interception. A little miscommunication. Now watch this tackle. Watch here. That 
finds a horse collar. That's a personal foul on Cameron Irving. That's another 15 yards, and it'll move the ball to the Knowles 42. And the Tigers, who scored last to get on the board, they could be threatening again here. Taj Boyd keeps it, picks the middle, got eight yards on a first down run. Taj Boyd now with five carries on the night. The reason you're seeing that, again, is because Florida State playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, wants them to be accountable for the quarterback and not just the running back in the run game. On second down, McDowell picks up the first down, and he crosses the 30-yard line of Florida State. A year ago, Herbie, you and I were talking. Clemson built a 14-point lead, and Florida State scored 35 unanswered points in the second half to pull away. They won it 49-37, and now reverse rolls. That's Clemson's right. trying to come from behind. Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, sending the signal along. Seconds are the block, and Watkins lost his footing. And that's an extension of their running game. They just get the ball out of the perimeter as much as they can. And Clemson starts to run Boyd, and they start to run McDowell. It puts a lot of pressure on these guys back here because they've got to make a decision on whether they're going to come up and run support because of the running of Boyd and, and McDowell, or do they sit back off the play-action pass game. Second and eight. McDowell on the outside. And somehow gets away from the defender, but not this time. Telvin Smith lassoes him and finally wrestles into the ground. And Telvin Smith had him initially. Telvin Smith's one of the better tacklers on his Florida State team. He had McDowell for a big loss, and McDowell fought out of it but just couldn't get even back to the line of scrimmage. That's swarming Florida State defense. Even when you miss a tackle, there's five or six other white jerseys right there. Zach Brooks replaces McDowell. Needs 16 on this third down. Have to cross the 20-yard line to get a crack at the first down here. Taj Boyd will try to take it up on top. Looking far side, high, incomplete. And it is fourth down. Humphreys was the intended receiver. Darby, a very active defensive back there. Only rushing three and dropping eight. That was a tight window to try to make that throw by Taj Boyd. Jeremy Pruitt again mixing it up, doing a great job. The new defensive coordinator for the Knowles. Now Bradley Pinion will attempt to pin the Knowles back inside the 10. Kenny Shaw is back standing exactly on the 10-yard line. Field position punt here. Fair catch by Shaw. He runs up on it and makes the catch right about the 13-yard line. Battle of the unbeaten. The ACC Conference. And you're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by the New Windows. State bus is with us here in South Carolina. And folks, it's time to enter the Allstate Ultimate Road Trip Sweepstakes. Go to AllstateCFB.com for a chance at a trip that begins in New Orleans at the Allstate Sugar Bowl and then heads out to the Vizio BCS National Championship in Pasadena. Yeah, Herbie, I know you're part of that promotion. I am. I'll be down in New Orleans watching the game with them and back out to Pasadena with you and the crew. We'll have a great few days here, a week. Florida State football leading by 10. Coming out from their own 13. Winston on first down, and uh, it was stopped before the snap. It's Cameron Irving, the left tackle. And Brent, you know the ne one name we've not called all night? That if you're a Clemson fan, you got to be wondering, well, where is he? Vic Beasley, number three, who's lined up against Cameron Irving. Leads the nation in sacks with nine. So far, has not 
gotten even close to Jameis Winston. You see number three on the left side of the defense. Now, of course, he would be on the right as you look down. Wilder is the running back. They're going to have to hurry the snap. They get it off. Wilder, nothing doing. Jammed at the point of attack. Big Deshaun Williams, though, we've called his name tonight. We sure have. It seems like the interior doing a better job of affecting things up front. It's the first time it just feels like the crowd is having an impact on the game and challenging the communication of Winston and his offensive line. In fact, Jimbo's going to call a timeout just to kind of regroup. That's their second one. 11 minutes, 52 seconds, please. They put five more seconds back up on that clock. So when we take a look at the scoring here tonight, after a fumble, it was the Knowles. They struck first on a 22-yard pass to Benjamin. They added a couple of field goals, and of course, Clemson scored. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. Brought to you by Hyundai. New thinking, new possibilities. UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. And AT&T. Rethink possible. Well, that shot is University President James F. Barker's home here at Clemson. A lot of beautiful buildings on this campus. A great scene here tonight. 80,000 plus. And they're heating up again. Trying to make it as tough as possible. Jameis Winston. First and 15. Winston from his own end zone. Incomplete. Green was the target. Threw it too high. And Winston knows it. Interesting decision here for, for Jimbo Fisher. He's shown a lot of confidence in the young Jameis Winston. He's pinned back in his own territory here. Up 10. The last thing you want to see is a big mistake. You know, look at him squint over there at that sideline like he's having a little difficulty picking up the uh, the signal from the sideline. You could see the young man mm -hmm. squinting there. Number eight, Darius Robinson, now, Darius Robinson of Clemson, one of their starting corners he's a senior was shaken up on a play and of course because he received medical attention he'll come off to the side for at least one play unless they burn a timeout. Martin Jenkins has also been seeing time in the defensive backfield especially when they go to a nickel. Second down and 15. Plenty of time left in the second quarter. Winston keeps it. Did not fool the defense. Travis Blanks, the safety from Tallahassee, if you will, making the stop. He's reading Vic Beasley, the defensive end, who collapses down right here. He's making a read. He comes down, so he's going to pull it. But a great job of the safety of killing. He doesn't quite have that explosiveness that some of these other quarterbacks around the country have when they pull it off of his own read. I think Brent Venables told the defensive end. Vic Beasley, come down, make him pull the ball. We want to keep the ball in the hands of the bigger quarterback to make an easier play in the open field. to hurry. I don't think he got it off if that clock is accurate. Going to throw far side high. Battle for the ball. And a catch made by Benjamin over there. They're calling it a catch. Delay a game. Uh, indeed. That clock zeroed out. Delay a game. He had one that was close on this possession and that time they caught it. He may have said that this crowd noise wouldn't bother him, but I'm here to tell you it would bother Johnny Unitas here tonight. 
This noise is fierce. Side Winston on third and 19. And they're going to be very content to try to pick up a few and then punt it away. Smart call by Jimbo Fisher, sensing the momentum. And the last thing he wants to do is put his quarterback in a position to force a throw in and maybe create that turnover. Jason Beatty. Trots out as the punter, and he'll be punting it away from him, remember, from the Knowles end zone. Humphreys is back deep, standing just on the other side of the 50-yard line. The Clemson with a very strong front. Every time you see the Knowles in punt formation, you think of Bobby Bowden's punter Ruski, but not here. Fair catch at the 48-yard line of Clemson. in South Carolina every we take a look at our Pacific life game summary it's pretty even with the exception of those turnovers those two turnovers were crucial it led to 14 points for Florida State and LaMarcus Joyner involved in both of them one other stat though that is one-sided six penalties against Florida State and none yet against Clemson and the crowd has been a factor no question of those penalties yep you're right Taj Boyd pocket Holds, fires far side, incomplete. And again, good miscommunication going on between receivers and quarterbacks here tonight. So much of this offense is predicated on the receivers and quarterback not only being on the same page, but adjusting your route based on the coverage that you see. And the quarterback and the wide receiver need to be able to see and adjust to the same coverage. If you read the wrong coverage or a different coverage from your quarterback, you're going to have misfires like that. Four receivers, and on the boundary is young Mike Williams. Taj Boyd taking a look in that direction. Going to go try to hit the freshman, and it was out of bounds. They think a lot of Mike Williams. He's 6'3". He's 210 pounds. He's from Vance, South Carolina. And keep an eye on this young man. They clearly wanted him over there one-on-one. -on -one. Great ball skills, and with his size, he can go up much like Kelvin Benjamin and make plays for Clemson. Knowles keeping seven in coverage. You're getting pressure by just rushing four and making Taj Boyd have to hurry. Some tight windows he's trying to throw into. Florida State burns its last time out, I believe. And yes, indeed, they did. Jeremy Pruitt, defensive coordinator, wants to talk with his group. The chase for the Sprint Cup heads to the Talladega Super Speedway, where anything can and does happen. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Talladega, presented by Five Hour Energy, tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. 9.49 remaining in the second quarter here in Clemson, South Carolina. Third down and 10 for the Tigers. Ties Boyd fires to the mark, and he's got it. Sammy Watkins got to the first down marker. Glad you said that, Brent, because that's the sign of a mature veteran receiver getting just enough. And it's going to be close. They're actually going to measure it. But good throw that time. Much better timing between the quarterback, Boyd, and one of his favorite targets, Sammy Watkins. Hey, Knowles are not giving these wide receivers much room to work at all. Look at that coverage. That ball had to be perfectly thrown or he wouldn't have had a chance that time. Nate Andrews, a true freshman there on the coverage. Turkey. 
Remember the last possession after that big interception and the horse collar, they started that drive on the on the Florida State 42 and ended up having to punt a missed opportunity. This time, another great opportunity where they start near midfield. We'll see if they come away with any points this time. Bottles on the Knolls, 41-yard line. Watkins moving around. A more of a difficult target. Play action with him, and that did not fool the defense. He was jumped by Christian Jones, the Mike linebacker. The guy who's fooled right now is Taj Boyd, Christian Jones right here. I think Taj Boyd had some weaknesses to the left, and instead he gets confused. You know, he's reading Christian Jones. If he comes down, he's going to pull it out. He faked down on the back and then came back to Taj Boyd. He misread there. Now, that was Zach Brooks blowing a block to number 24. He's got to look in that direction. Incomplete. Telvin Smith, the defender there, big number 22. 32 tackles on the season. Hodge has to be careful that even when he has time because he's been hurried tonight. Even on that and he starts to kind of get off rhythm and, he, and his footwork gets messed up because he's hurrying even when he has time. I think Florida State's confusing him and they're doing a good job of pressuring him. Third and 14 moves the pocket to the left flings it incomplete and they stop again the Knowles and that was young Andrews there. Another very tight window for Taj Boyd to get the, that throw into. Look how quick that Florida State defense is lined up and finding these wide receivers. You've got mm. four or five different defenders out there. Look how tight. you got three different guys all over. And time again, the young freshman Andrews on the play and another blown opportunity for Clemson's offense. Now the battle of field position. Pinion punting again and Shaw is back on the 10 yard line. Hangs it high. Gonna let this one bounce, and it does not go into the end zone. Humphreys gets down on it on the five-yard line. Well, it's time for tonight's Athlon Flag Trivia Question. Which Heisman Trophy winner hails from Jameis Winston's hometown, Bessemer, Alabama? Right there in that area, Hueytown <laughs> High School. Heisman Trophy winner hails from that hometown. Here he is. Here's the young man. He's on everybody's chart right now when they list the top half dozen. Yeah, he's in the top oh, five right Winston. now. Winston. Let's see what he can do in the teeth of this noise. 847. Chad Abram back on the field and Freeman running back. Freeman did the best he could. <laughs> Now this Clemson defensive front last series where they had Florida State pinned. I think they just pinned their ears back and won the battle at the line of scrimmage. They've got to pin back again. You can see there on that first and ten. They, that's the most aggressive they've been the last series and the start of this this series with the way they've kind of pinned their ears back and been more of an attack mode. From the end zone. Fires complete to Green for a first down. Rashad Green. Now that is a huge throw on second down. Given time, you can see how comfortable he is throwing from the pocket into the teeth of that defense. They give him time. I love how he keeps his vision downfield for a young quarterback with some pressure on him. He doesn't stare down the pressure. He's looking through the pressure. He feels it, but he sees the coverage and makes the throw. Pitch to the outside, Shaw, and they've got another first down. They get to the edge that time against Robert Smith. You know, it's a, it's a simple little thing, but you want to put the ball out in front of your wide receiver so he can continue to run and not have to miss a stride. That's a perfectly thrown football right in front of Kenny Shaw. That time they're in sync. Earlier they missed on on a throw. That time, perfect throw, and they weren't pinned back inside their home ten. All of a sudden, they're out to close to the 30 yard line. First down. Keep it in the air. And Green this time breaks free. 35, 
foot race, great speed. Here goes Green, touchdown Florida State. And the signal to the crowd. 72 yards. Well, Brent Venables brought a zone blitz where he brought linebackers and defensive backs and he dropped defensive linemen in that area where a linebacker typically is in pass coverage. And out in space, the big fellas close to 300 pounds have no chance to be able to keep Green away from catching that football. Roberto Aleo tacks on another extra point. So, Jameis Winston's longest completion of the season. And folks, he's starting to move up those Heisman charts, isn't he? Watch the two defensive linemen right here who are going to drop back, and they brought pressure from the outside. The defensive linemen are 300 pounds. They try to confuse the offensive line. You see the two big 300-pounders in coverage. In fact, there's Deshaun Williams trying to make a play. Great job of picking up the pressure. And once he made that safety miss, nobody's going to catch Rashad Green. And Deshaun Williams is down on the field being tended to. At about the three-yard line, he was in on the extra point for the Clemson Tigers. And there is a very, very active defensive lineman. So while well, we've got a moment, let's check in with uh, Robert Flores for an update. Robert. All right, Robert, thank you very much. And aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Been a struggle in conference play. I want to check in the uh, the Associated Press top ten because we are going to have some some shakeups over here. All right, uh, we're going to play a little bit later. Alabama rolling as we said. Clemson in a dogfight. Buckeyes struggled, but they win in the end. LSU is down. Texas A&M lost. Louisville lost. UCLA lost. This has been a shakeup day. And we had one last week. South Carolina sitting at 12. They also lost. So it's. Survival to fittest. Who's still going to be out there? Well, right now Alabama with that big lead on Arkansas, Herbie. They'll be yeah. they'll be number one. You would yeah. figure that the uh, Oregon BCS poll tomorrow night yeah. will have the number one too. If Oregon beats Washington State. You know, a lot of the mock standings would have them at two, and the winner of this game more than likely sitting at three. Well, the one thing about Clemson, if they rally and somehow win this game against Florida State. They've got an unbelievable argument having beaten Georgia when Georgia was healthy mm -hmm. in their opening game this season and now they've played the number five ranked Florida State was, was Georgia about number five that night. Yeah, they, sure. they were yeah. five. Yeah. So let's hope the big fella is able to return in the second half. Watkins and Bryant are going to be back deep. The Knowles have built a 24 to 7 lead here with seven minutes to go. Again, keeping it short now by the hands of the speedsters. And uh, all right, Herbie, which Heisman Trophy winner uh, is from there? I know you're going to get Bo this. Jackson. You got it, Did my friend. It? I knew you'd get it. <laughs> Bo Jackson, 1985. Auburn Tigers. One of the great athletes that this country has ever produced. Right there. Bo, Bo Jackson. I'm telling you, he was <laughs> unbelievable. You saw Winston throw from right field? Bo yeah. Jackson could hung oh, over yeah. <laughs> 24-7 now. Ty's going to keep it. And he gets wrestled and thrown back by this very active defense of Jeremy Pruitt. When we talk about Jeremy Pruitt, Jernigan lost his helmet, so he's going to have to go off for a play. When we talk about Jeremy Pruitt over there, remember where he came from. He worked with Nick Saban. He was a director of player development, and then he coached the secondary. And if you're going to learn how to coach the secondary, there's one man you want to study under, and that man is Nick Saban. That's his specialty. Now, here comes Ty Boyd. Flips it off to the side. McDowell got the first down. Run out short. 
of midfield by Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Very important for Taj Boyd and Clemson to get something going. The last two possessions, they've had great opportunities with great field position, came away with no points, and then they give up a touchdown. Remember, Florida State gets the ball to start the second half. They desperately need points on this drive. On first down, they run McDowell. Pick up about a yard close to midfield, and Christian Jones hitting first. Seeing Christian Jones, some move that Jeremy Pruitt did when they moved him to defensive end. I think it not only affects Jones playing up front, giving him more athletic ability, but also Terrence Smith gets moved in 24 in at linebacker. And you put Terrence Smith and Telvin Smith together, that's, that's a great combination. Second down, middle. Great grab by Watkins. There's those hands that you spoke about earlier again. So often you see receivers today use their shoulder pads to make a catch. Not with Sammy Watkins, and if he didn't have the hands there, he wouldn't have made that play. Hopper, one of the wide receivers, off to the right. Bryant, off to the left. Quarterback draw all the way. Beautiful run by Ty Boyd as he crosses the 25-yard line. It went with an empty backfield motion. McDowell out. They brought a blitz. Florida State did with Terrence Smith. There's nobody left. Great job of recognizing that, finding the void, and then picking up as many yards as he could. Anytime they empty out the backfield, Taj Boyd is a threat running the football. Zach Brooks in as the running back. Joiner is up on that edge, left side of your screen now. Lined up like he wants to come on this first down. They move the H back over, and so Joiner splits to the outside. Come back to the middle, intercepted. Picked off by you know who, Lamarcus Joiner, who started this defensive look, lined up at the line of scrimmage, dropped off went back and made the interception. He now has forced two fumbles and he has picked off a pass. What a night for LaMarcus Joyner. He's an All-American for a reason and he feels that this Florida State team is different as far as his leadership. He is making plays and look at his eyes. Talk about a guy that's focused. You can see a Florida State player running on the field there. Demonte McAllister late. I'm not so sure that the Knolls still didn't have 10 defenders, but another miscue and an errant throw that time by Taj Boyd. So Winston and the offense come back in. Five minutes to go in the first half. Going deep down that far sideline, one-on-one, -on -one and trying to break green, drew the penalty flag. The defender was holding on. Breland was holding on. He may, he may have prevented a touchdown. We'll take a look at it on replay because that great speed was breaking free again. Yards, the call by Jimbo Fisher. 24 to 7. They get a big turnover. Why not take a shot? Clearly, pass interference by Breland. I think he felt Green was about to get by him. He holds on, pulls his shoulder down. But it, I love that call. Jimbo Fisher, young quarterback. Why not take a chance there and try to get the ball downfield? Jimbo Fisher has been called impatient as a play caller. Tonight he showed great patience in the first half with balance. But every now and again with this great speed, he'll take it up on top as he did that time. Freeman is Russell down. Incidentally, that pass interference was the first penalty of the night. First penalty of the night against Clemson. Here's that screen again from the quarterback. Hey, when you're young, when you're young, you should be swinging like that, right? Have trouble seeing the curveball this <laughs> one. Second down at nine. That's O'Leary, the H back. Here's Winston. Going to lob it long again for Benjamin, who caught the first touchdown pass of the game, a 22 yard strike. <laughs> Robinson had coverage that time, and we come to third down here with the clock moving. Inside of four and a half. Brent, you go back to that interception, you add all these numbers up. Florida State ran a guy on, and they still only had 10 guys on the field when they ended up making that big interception by Joyner. 10 guys, almost had nine, end up with 10 and still get the pick. Third down and nine.
Cranston. Plenty of time. Couldn't find an open receiver. On the move. Chucks it beautifully to Green. Moving to the left. The toughest throw for a right-handed quarterback. And he made it look easy that time. How about the poise of his young quarterback? Third down. Clemson trying to get back into this game. He has patience. He waits for the play. You think he might scramble. A defender loses his wide receiver. Robert Smith. And he makes the throw for the first down. He's thrown for 194 yards already tonight. And Cameron Irvin continues his great job against number three, Beasley, the defensive end. Now he picks up a double team from a back, Beasley does, and that pass was almost picked off that time by Robert Smith. So, boy, uh, they're changing his footwear. Let's check in down below now with uh, Heather Cox. Brett and Herbie, we've seen a lot of empty out of Florida State. Might have something to do with the fact that their tailback, James Wilder, is out for the game with the concussion. Guys, this is a big loss. He had two touchdown runs last year against Clemson. He was finally coming into his own after shoulder injury this year. Look for Devontae Freeman and Carlos Williams in his place. All right, thank you, Heather. Bad break for the young man. Second down and 10. Here's Freeman. Freeman breaks free. And still battles across the first down line to the 35-yard line. Powerful run by Devontae Freeman. He's out of the Miami, Florida area. Just tremendous balance. Florida State has now called 34 plays in this game. 17 where they've run the football and 17 where they've thrown the football. Jameis Winston's playing well, but let's give an assist to Jimbo Fisher with his preparation. It's been masterful here in the first half. Winston on first down, fires complete. Here's Green again, and Green picking up about nine yards before he's taken down. Breland is in there on the tackle, and Winston now 12 of 18, over 200 yards with two touchdowns, and he has hit Green seven times tonight for 129 yards, and we have young man from Clemson back down on the field. Is that Sui, Herbie? Yes, it is. One of their leaders. The pile of bodies at the tackle, and he made the play. And one of, one of the great players on this Clemson defense. It looks like he got a leg whip right at the left, close to his left knee. Well, coming up, I want to remind you to stay tuned for the Capital One halftime report to have scores and highlights from a very busy day of college football. LSU in a dogfight with Ole Miss. They trail 24-17. Alabama rolling over Arkansas. 45 nothing is the count there. Notre Dame leads USC 14-10. And let's go down below and check in with Heather. Meanwhile, Brent, a lot of concern on the Clemson sideline for their quarterback, Taj Boyd. A lot of players huddled around him as well as the athletic training staff. They cut off the tape from his right ankle and put on a heavier, more Velcro brace that will provide more support. They do have that shoe back on, tighten it up quite a bit. A lot of conversation, though, about the future of Taj Boyd in this game. I'll keep you posted. All right. Thank you, Heather. That is big, and we'll find out if... He's able to continue to play. He's a gamer and a fighter and a fifth year senior. So he's going to do everything he can to stay out there for Chad Morris and his, his Clemson offense. Looks like they're going to take Shuey into the locker room. This might have been the play here when he got that first down. Yeah, Herbie, the uh, the Knowles, I want to bring up a point. They buried Maryland 63 nothing. Very, very impressive. But I think the key thing, they had a week off. Yeah. That gives you an extra week to heal up, get ready for Clemson, yep. and they were really prepared here tonight. Both sides of the football in this first half. Can't say enough good things about the preparation. Still got another half to go, but this first half, they have been...
Williams and Whitfield bank deep for the Knowles to start the second half. And coming out is Whitfield on that far side, got a gap and blasts his way to the 41. A flag comes down. Bradley Pinion, the kickoff man, made the stop on that play. Been a dead ball foul there on Florida State. Here in the run, personal foul, face mask, mm -hmm. number 92, kicking team. Oh, the kicker. Be added to the end of the run. Oh. First down. Well, we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, and it is a comparison of our two quarterbacks. Seamus Winston has played very, very well. You can see the, the 14 of 21, but the real story is the balanced play calling from Jimbo Fisher and Taj Boyd. Remarkable effort by Florida State's defense getting pressure without having to blitz, which is a big surprise coming into the game. The fourth time that Winston has thrown for more than 200 yards in a game as a freshman already. High this toss and a great leaping grab. Is it waved off down there? Green went up in the air. The ball was high. Pretty good effort by Green, but I don't think he possessed it all the way through. The official's all over. It looks like he has it. Official had a great look from the other side and pretty quick coverage there by the, Robinson. the corner, Darius Robinson. Right there is, I think, where he lost it. Talked about Clemson getting a stop. Big kickoff return, and then the face mask. Florida State starts this drive with the 42-yard line. So in the second down and 10, they'll run the toss play with Freeman. And he is jumped by the defensive front, Grady Jarrett, coming through to make a play. They've had their hands full with this Florida State offensive line here tonight, but Jarrett able to penetrate and blow it up that time. Big third down here. Let's see if Clemson brings pressure. If they rush three and drop people in the, back into coverage. Got to get to the 32-yard line for a first down. Fires. Caught first down. Benjamin breaks free. And he's into the red zone, the 16-yard line on a big third down strike by the precocious freshman. And he has time to throw. He gets a little pressure off to his right late, but he steps into the pocket. And look at the soft coverage on third down. Once he had time, he's waiting for Benjamin to clear and make the turn. All alone, nobody close to him. Great again, great job of giving him the time there on third down. 4-4 four four now on third downs for picking up the first downs for this quarterback. Deflected incomplete, going to be second down. Pass was clearly deflected. I think Corey Crawford, 93, dropped into coverage, got a hand on it. There he is. It was a tight throw there. I think Jameis may have predetermined where he wanted to go with the football there. His, his fullback led out of the backfield, was all alone. If he would have seen him, he walks into the end zone for a touchdown.
Second and ten. Incomplete. It'll be another third down. Remember, he converted his last third down. Breland was the defensive back, so this is a big, big play here for the Tiger defense. And third down when he's had to throw the football, not only four or four, but he's picked up four first downs. The Knolls are five and seven on the night. Remember, Clemson came into the night the best in the country in third down defense. Christian Green is number 89. Drop it off underneath. Touchdown, Rashad Green. Little flanker screen, had some linemen lead him into the end zone. You don't always have to throw it downfield to come up with a big play. And that's exactly what Florida State wanted to do to set the tone here in the second half. Great field position after the kickoff return. Take advantage of it with a touchdown. So he converts two third downs, a second one for a touchdown. A Wayo converts. Famous Jameis Winston is about to move to the top of the Heisman Trophy charts. What a night. This telecast available in high definition, brought to you by Vizio. Jameis Winston with three touchdown passes on the night. And Florida State has opened up a 34-7 lead on the Clemson Tigers. Rashad Green being stretched out a little bit over there on the sideline. As you said, he's tired from catching all of Winston's uh, perfectly thrown footballs yeah. and then running. Eight catches, 146 <laughs> yards, and a couple of scores. You need to catch your breath over there. Set now. Watkins was trying to return it. And let's take a look now at this young man, Herbie, and what he's accomplished here tonight. Well, he got off to a great start. How's this for your first pass of the night? Touchdown, Kelvin Benjamin. It kind of set the tone. He has been flawless tonight in his execution. Found Green. Green made a big play. And then he goes back to Green on the flanker screen. Gets some great blocks downfield to lead him into the end zone. So I want to compare Johnny Manziel through five games with Jameis Winston. Folks, take a look at it. One Absorb those numbers. Yep. The one thing he'll need at some point besides tonight is that Johnny Menzel Alabama game. Maybe it's the Miami game in early November. What's wrong with this one? Here comes you one. You're beating up on the number three ranked no, team in the country. Uh, I know. Huh? But I mean, you still need another. You just got to keep building. You know, we live in that world of what have you done for me lately? I'm with You're you. I tough, love the man. I, no, I love the kid. But I'm just telling you, based on the way people react, it's, it's flawless. Well, the Miami Hurricanes will be ready That'll on November 2nd. Tallahassee, Florida. Get your tickets now for that one, folks. That was a nice grab by the freshman, Mike Williams. See what Taj can do in trying to get his team still to believe that they can make a play. He told me that Mike Williams adjusts to that ball that's thrown back on the back shoulder fade as well as any of his wide receivers, even though he is a young, true freshman. Here's McDowell. If you're Clemson, this game's not going the way you intended. You, you still have to show fight. You still have to be able to show this is a long season. You don't want this game to get out of control. See what kind of backbone they have here. What kind of character they have to try to fight back. One at a time. Four touchdowns and some stops. McDowell, you got to get the first one, like you say, Herbie, close to midfield. This is, again, this is where that leadership's important. They came in tonight thinking their tempo could be a factor in trying to be a bit of an equalizer up front in the trenches, try to wear down the more athletic Florida State defensive front. We've not seen that yet. Quick throw and almost picked. Doing a great job with Seconder battling the yeah, defender. That's Telvin Smith yeah. on him. There are two guys on this defense that are just special. Telvin Smith and LaMarcus Joyner. Telvin Smith jumped that, and I think Taj Boyd stared down his receiver and made it a little bit easier. But I love the energy of the senior Telvin Smith and the senior LaMarcus Joyner, clearly the leaders of this Knowles defense. 
Second down and 10. Boyd's in trouble. Down goes Taj. Timmy Jernigan. How about rushing four? And Timmy Jernigan right in the middle uses his hands to be able to just throw down the offensive lineman Horton. Didn't have a chance. He grabbed him and threw him. They're rushing four and getting pressure like that. Taj Boyd doesn't have a chance to throw the football against the Knowles defense. Looking at a third and 17. Middle and the traffic. And it was broken up that time by Terrence Brooks. So fourth down and here comes the punting team. You know, it has been a dozen years since Florida State has come to Clemson, South Carolina and won a football game. That's right. This series has been dominated recently by the home team. But here tonight, the Knowles are well on their way with a 34-7 lead. You and I talked at halftime. It just, this Florida State team, it feels different. You know, it, it, this is a really good team with great leadership. The drive, Kenny Shaw back to the six-yard line. And he found a little bit of a hole. Shaw with a fine return out to the 30-yard line. Speed, quickness, power, and a quarterback who could be very special. What else do you need? Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. Brought to you by Nissan premier partner of the Heisman Trophy and Wells Fargo when people talk great things happen well the Nissan Heisman house here in Clemson this weekend with games and fun for the fans to help get everyone ready for tonight's big game and of course the coaches trophy presented by Dr. Pepper will be awarded to the winner of the Vizio BCS National Championship on January 6th in Pasadena first BCS standing to come out tomorrow We'll see how high Florida State will jump if they hang on here. Winston, pockets clean, deflected, could be picked off. And it falls incomplete. As Spencer Sui, I'm not sure he could find it when it was deflected up there. Let's check it down below with Heather. Well, it seems that Florida State got Jimbo Fisher's message loud and clear at halftime. He told them, we haven't done anything yet. Be prepared to weather this storm. Clemson's going to throw everything at us. And Herbie, you were talking so much about the leadership. Well, it starts at that quarterback position. I've been amazed all night to watch Jameis Winston and watch the maturity and the leadership that he's showing wise beyond his years. So vocal on the sideline, getting not only the offense, but the defense involved. And I haven't seen leadership like this from a freshman quarterback on the bench in a long time. Yep. Drops it off to Benjamin, complete another you know, I, first down. Heather, he told us this week, which I found interesting, he redshirted last year after all the hype. Usually these guys come in and they play right away. He said while he redshirted, that's Breland who has been ejected and instant replay will take a look at this they can't overturn the penalty uh, he he blitzed and he ended up hitting the quarterback high Winston after he threw it he's a defenseless player see where the initial contact is yeah they're gonna throw him out for that that'll that'll hold up blitz comes from right out here oh yeah oh. like he even launched himself on this one this one easy And that's what they're trying to eliminate right there. Well, it is confirmed. Number 17 is disqualified. Heather saying he affects not just the offense but the defense. He he is a kind of a rah-rah type of guy. He's cheering the defense on, cheering the offense on. Breland has to head to the locker room. Williams checks into the backfield for the Knowles. Catches a flare pass. Got a first down, and there's another flag. Holding. 
54 offense. 10 yards, previous spot. Good first down. That's the right guard, Jackson. Winston right there with the offensive line after that mistake. Not afraid to speak up. And of course with this big lead, you basically have taken the crowd out of it now. Beasley in pursuit. It was Beasley who chased him out of the pocket. And then he was brought down. Reader, DJ Reader, cleaned it up. But watch number three get loose. Off to the left. First time tonight he's gotten pressure. He didn't bite on the fake at all. He and Jared also got in there before Reader, DJ Reader, cleaned it up. Every time I say DJ Reader, I'm shocked to think that he pitches for the baseball team at 325 pounds. It's a base. Can you imagine that big fella getting out on that mound? I wouldn't want to face him. You see what the freshman come up with on second and 28. He's going to get sacked again, and this time he's brought down by Corey Crawford, the junior from Columbus, Georgia. Crawford tonight named captain. And with so much talk about breast cancer awareness in the, the whole month of October tonight, breast cancer awareness week for Clemson. His mother passed away from breast cancer a couple years ago. He's dedicated this game tonight to her. He's deflected a bunch of passes. That time he got the pressure. Freeman to pick up a few yards. Beasley flashes that time, throws the running back down, and the Knowles will punt. Lined him up at linebacker that time, something that Brent Venables has not shown all year. And he showed pretty good closing speed for a defensive end playing linebacker. Right here, usually he's out here on the side, but I think he knew that they were probably going to hand it off on third and long with great speed. Made a couple plays on that series. He did indeed. First time he's uh, he's flashed. Mm -hmm. Got his first tackle on that second one. Good pressure on the first one. Beatty in now to punt this away. Humphreys is back deep for the Tigers. Beautiful punt. Drives him back to the 15-yard line, and here comes Humphreys looking for an alley on the right. Got a block. 40, 45, midfield, coming down the sideline and out of bounds. A Fine, fine return by Adam Humphreys, a junior from just up the road from Spartanburg, South Carolina. A very good athlete who they have as a slot receiver back with those sure hands. He makes the first guy miss, picks up a couple good blocks, and now he's just kind of buying his time to try to pick up one more block and until he gets down the sidelines. He almost got to the corner and took it to the end zone. Sort of out punted coverage with a 50-yard punt and a 45-yard return. And McDowell swinging over to the left side. He crosses the 35-yard line for the Tigers. Have not seen this offense get to the perimeter in their running game very much tonight. That might be the second time we've seen them have a little bit of room to the outside. Second and five, swing it, dropped on the outside by... Stanton's second jump. I think he started to peek up field before he secured the football. Watch his eyes. He's looking down the field. And he starts to peek up right before he caught the football. You see where those Florida State defenders were. You got to catch the ball first. Third down of five, they rushed five, almost got there, incomplete intended for the freshman Williams. And Taj Boyd erratic, but because of that pressure with four, they're closing in on him. Mike Williams could have made that catch for the first down. 
Sammy Watkins was challenged by Chad Morris, his offensive coordinator. And all, all the receivers were about, hey, last year we got beat up in Tallahassee. And they're getting beaten up again tonight. Need five yards to keep this going. This is a fourth down. Taj to the right, fires, intercepted. Picked off by Darby. Ronald Darby. Shaken up onto play as he's tackled after the interception. Brent, I, I happen to be watching him. He baited his throw the entire time. Watch him out here. He's just waiting, 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 and then steps in front of it. It was almost like, yeah, throw it. He's open. He's open. Baited the throw to pull from Boyd, and it stepped in front for the interception. And the trap was closed. coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Tough night for Taj Boyd, 12 of 30, only 116 yards. Clemson has only 174 total yards here tonight. And Williams, Carlos Williams back in. And of course, Jameis Winston's parents are very proud of the young man. Toner and Loretta Winston are now. Loretta's nickname is J Boo. That, that was the nickname she gave Jameis when he was very, very young. The media has tagged on famous Jameis. And I dare say after tonight, Mom, famous is going to be a little more prominent in the headlines than J Boo. Here comes Winston firing now, complete to O'Leary. And let us check in with Robert Floyd. So another one falls. Consider Ole Miss the injuries that have mounted on that side of the ball. That is a heroic effort by Hugh Freeze's bunch tonight. Remember, they went into Austin and whipped up on Texas earlier this season. Winston takes off, tucks the ball away, and he's short of midfield. So he is there again. We've got a flag here. Thrown way back in the backfield by one of the line judges. What is that now? Six of the top 12? First They're going to go down? Number nine on the defense. I think so. Six, six of the, the top 12. That's 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. If last week they were calling shake up Saturday, I don't know what today is. And you know, when you look at the penalties, they were very one sided at one time, but now here in the second half, they've gone against Clemson. In terms of turnovers, Clemson's turned the ball over four times in this game, resulting in 17 of Florida State's 34 points. And the Tiger attack has bogged down tonight. They don't even have 200 yards, and they've given up 368 to the Noles here tonight. So it's a very, very one-sided game. Freeman back in. Quick strike to the outside. And Rashad Green short of the first down. As a reminder to uh, stay tuned, let me, let me check that Kenny Shaw. Correct that. 81. Stay tuned now after the game. We're the West Coast for your late local news of most of these ABC stations. Be sure to turn to ESPN for Sports Center for the highlights of the day in sports. The reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny Manziel, goes down against Auburn today. So that's the second loss that he's suffered. Alabama beating him. For the second consecutive year, Winston back firing, complete years older, battling away. Side the 10, powerful run for the young man from South Florida. His grandpa, Jack Nicholas, is going to be proud of this run. Oh, maybe Jack taught him this. It's, it's lower in the shoulder. The big fella, boom, right over top of Travis Blanks. Kind of sums up tonight for Clemson's defense. Mercy. First down and goal. Florida State with 184 yaks here tonight. Wow. Freeman still churning. Crosses the five-yard line to the four. This offense has an offensive line that is physical, receivers that can make plays, and a tight end in Nick O'Leary that can do this. Jack is his grandfather. That's an old school play by a big tight end. He's, he's pretty happy about that. One. He's going to love it in the film room, too. Woody, Guy, Woody Hayes would have loved that. <laughs> no doubt about that. But they've got a quarterback that's in sync. They've got depth in the backfield, receivers making plays in a line. These guys have it all going tonight. 
Second and goal. Play action. A little bit too high for O'Leary. He wanted him in the back of the end zone. Got it up just a touch high. He figured he earned it. And he was trying to love feed the, the little bear. Love the, love the call there. Second down. If there's ever a time to try to throw the ball down in here, I think it's on first or second down. The time Florida State's line or Clemson's linebackers did just enough to be able to get back off of the play action phase to force him to throw it a little bit higher than he intended. Beasley trying to get a jump. Winston's got an open path. Touchdown, Florida State. Pop slides it. That's my boy. <laughs> oh, oh, baby. If he likes that one, we can see the entire night. What a, what a great, a great play. And a simple play, but Winston... How comfortable is he in the pocket? We've seen him do that throughout his brief career this year. And that's another example. Instead of trying to step outside, he just steps into the pocket and finds a lane to get into the end zone. A whale. So it has been a night of nights for Jameis Winston. Thrown for 339. Three touchdown passes and one rushing touchdown. And Pops loves every second. You have to go back to 2001. Chris Ricks, Javon Walker, the receiver. Greg Jones taking over on a 51-yard touchdown midway through the fourth. Bobby Bowden and the Knowles beat Terry Bowden and Clemson 41-27 in that Bowden goal. And that, folks, is the last time that Florida State has won a game. They've lost five in a row here in South Carolina. But famous Jameis Winston is having a night of nights. Johnny Mansell, move over. That's Watkins. Coming near side. Out of bounds, shy of the 20-yard line. And this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, Adrian Peterson of the Vikings will take on Eli Manning and the winless Giants. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6.30 p.m. Actually, I'm looking forward to see what John Gruden has to say when he breaks down the giant tape and talks about Eli Manning's interceptions and things like that. I'm really looking forward to what John... I know he's going to break it down. I know he's going to talk about it. I'm going to be there. I can't believe, Herbie, that the Giants are winless this year. I just don't understand it. Got to be the biggest surprise in the NFL. I think so. And that's uh, Latavis Bryant. I believe that's his first catch of the night. That's indeed his, his number one catch. He's only been targeted a couple times. He had one go off his hands. These corners from Florida State have shut down all these receivers. Power with McDowell. What, what, you know, bro, I think what they've done is they've taken away anything downfield. Uh, Taj Boyd only one of nine on throws of 15 yards or longer. They, they've forced everything underneath, and they've been able to dominate at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, exactly. Now, that's what, it's been hard for him to get downfield. Yep because they haven't given him a, that much time. But I'm impressed with what Pruitt has done. And uh, there's a nice run by, by McDowell out close to the field. I'm very impressed with what Pruitt has done in, in adjusting this defense that Mark Stoops has done a good job with. Yeah, yeah, they're doing it in a very different way. Taj Boyd's numbers tonight, I mean, that, that's one of the worst games that Taj Boyd's had in his career. And he's a veteran quarterback. He's been under pressure for this defense. Telvin Smith again. Yeah, Telvin I mean, Tell Tell Smith's a safety playing linebacker. You know, he, he talked a lot this week about the love that he has for this team. You can see the way he's playing tonight. Yeah, there was one moment that I haven't mentioned about the Knowles that, that I was. I, I, I've got to applaud him. When Clemson was coming down the hill and everybody was excited and the Knowles were coming out on the far side, they did not come out. There was no trash talking. They went over to their sideline, got ready for the football game. Yep. And, you know, this, is, this is a business, business trip, trip for yep. Florida State. Not like Alabama's approach. Tennis Boyd, taken down by Christian Jones, is in there. 
Christian's had a big night. Irving, you yes, like him? I, I like how they moved him to defensive end because of the loss of those the, the powerhouse defensive ends that they had a year ago, and Warner and, and Jenkins and Carradine. Now he's, they moved him down, and I think he's only going to get better as the year progresses where they put his hand on the ground and give him a little bit more pressure off the edge. But their entire front four and rotating bodies in is playing so well. Taj keeping it, trying to get that first down. And there's a penalty flag thrown near midfield on this play. Holding 58 offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. That's the center, Ryan Norton. He locked up Telvin Smith. Kelvin Smith is 6'3", uh, about 218 pounds. You don't see a lot of linebackers in today's game at 218 pounds, but he has a tremendous amount of toughness to go with that 218 pounds. It allows him to play in the, in the trenches in the middle of that defense. That jersey says, I've been playing big <laughs> been boy playing. football. I want to tell you than. that. Here's Taj. Taken down again with that constant pressure yep. that has been coming his way. He just hasn't had a chance. And that, that's, again, that's just rushing four guys and, and getting that kind of pressure. That's, that's very, very unique and different. Usually it's a wide array of zone blitz and, and man pressures. They're just rushing four and getting there. Tomahawk Chop with the Florida State faithful. Who have traveled here for this game? Kenny Shaw fumbled it, but there's the penalty fight. Let's see if they gave him enough room to uh, to field that. Okay, Kenny Shaw was was back, and uh, the flag came flying. It seemed to be a lot of bodies down there. And let's see what the call is going to be here. People have not seen this, but those five offensive linemen from the very first time we've gone to breaks, the linemen come out. Now, now the whole offense is out here, but I, you and I, every time we've gone to a break, we've been am amused almost by that approach. It's like the corner that time, coverage Robinson. guys are like George Foreman. They just come out and stand. The rest of the offense is over there with Jimbo Fisher. They're on the field ready to play. Carlos Williams will come in. He'll be the hammer now. You would expect Florida State to attempt to go to work on the clock. And uh, Matias, number 70. Ball start, 70. Offense, five yards, still first down. I think that's part of the reason they moved Carlos Williams over from safety over to running back. It gives him more depth at that position. Freeman, a little bit more of a, a, a back that has tremendous quickness, but Wilder with the power, and when he goes down with a concussion, you have Carlos Williams who can step in there and be the similar type of back. And they're going to uh, try Williams, and he's run out of bounds. And uh, of course, our NFL countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern. You'll get all the latest news, updates from stadiums around the league. Ray Lewis is going to sit down with Jet head coach Rex Ryan. And then before you get your lineups, catch fantasy football now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2 to get your team ready. Freeman checks in as the Knowles running back here. Forty-one seven, final minute of the third quarter. And Freeman breaks across. Clemson's 40-yard line. There's the, there's the difference when Freeman gets the football, and that's what teams the rest of the ACC are going to have to deal with. That combination of Freeman, whether it's Wilder or Williams, more the power backs, mix in some play action, different formations. It's been a very, very effective package that Jimbo Fisher and his offensive staff have put together for Jameis Winston. Go on the road and average seven yards a play. You got to feel pretty good about your chances. Here's Freeman. Will attempt to stay in bounds. And he couldn't there at the end. He went out to uh, stop the clock, and a flag comes flying. There is a penalty flag. After the player was out of bounds, first foul, late hit, number 
Well, that's 10 penalties now, Brent. Going back to what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, Robert Smith incurs that penalty, and uh, Knowles are threatening again here. But that block by Nick O'Leary, the tight end. We've seen him make some catches. This time, he just kind of sets the edge at the top. Look at that block on Shaq Lawson. That's what allows the big fella Trey Jackson to get around the corner. The block by O'Leary was key there. Running off the final seconds here in the third quarter. They'll take a 41-7 lead. And famous Jameis says, the fourth quarter belongs to us. We're not finished. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC stations. And as you look down on our scene, it has been a Florida State beatdown here in Clemson. 445 yards of offense to 200 yards of offense for the Clemson Tigers. Freeman and Williams in that backfield as the Knowles are threatening again here. The first snap of the final quarter. Freeman on the sweep. And he is out of bounds around the seven yard line. Another penalty flag comes flying. Holding 52 offense. 10 yards. Still first down. That's Brian Stork for center. So coach says you're not perfect tonight. You're having a good night, but you weren't perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see his eyes there of, of disappointment. You know, here they are 41 to 7, and he's discouraged and disappointed there. But they still are competing. Williams, hard runner to the 15-yard line. Some guys, all these years you've covered this, and I, I know for me, there's some guys that just you almost feel like they're born to do this. And, I, and, and Jameis Winston feels like that. He just feels like the bigger the stage, the better he's going to play. Some guys have that, and some guys have to hope to get to that point. Jameis Winston, he, we saw in the pregame, we were showing Clemson, Come down the hill. He went into the Florida State locker room and he had a look on his face like, this is what, why we're here. Let's go do this. We're not leaving without a win. And those players were looking at him like he was a fifth year senior. Freeman. So he's down to the seven yard line. for that first down. He got the first down there. First big game on the road. That no one else knew. I want to thank Jimbo Fisher and the entire coaching staff for allowing our crew to put a camera inside their locker room prior to the start of this big game. Okay, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing that you convinced them, Herbie, that it would be good. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's your first Heisman moment right there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That, you know, <laughs> the look in his eyes said it all. That was pregame. And when he walked into this stadium, when he got off the bus, he had the big smile on his face. Yeah. Acted like he didn't have a care in the world, and he's played that way here. 
Looks like Jimbo's going to get a timeout here. You know those Alabama teams? You know, they always timeout. coach. Nick Saban, we always kind of kid. In the national championship, he's up by 20 or 30. Timeout. He's coaching in the last. Jimbo, exact same way. Well, we're going to take a look at our Pacific Live game summary, and we're going to start with Winston's entry. First time in his stadium. Three versus five. Am I nervous? First play of the game. Touchdown after a turnover. Oh, yeah. I can run it in, too. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much done it all. And then on the other side of the ball, let's not forget about this Florida State defense. They have been all over Taj Boyd. He's 14 to 32 on the night. Getting a lot of pressure. Created the two turnovers. They turned those turnovers into points early. What a great game. Big time game by LaMarcus Joyner. Created both of those, er those early turnovers and Florida State really hasn't looked back since the early part of the game. And that was a good scoop and score for young Mario Edwards who dashed in. Yeah. We've had some defensive linemen the last few weeks score we a touchdown. We have. First down and goal. Freeman bounces off, spins, powerful run for a touchdown. Brought in a big offensive lineman there, Ira Denson, as an H-back. Big 55 in there. O'Leary getting a push. Freeman never giving up on it. He's quietly had a really consistent night himself. See if he gets the ball across. Looks like the knee touched right as it was crossing the plane. And it is 48-7, number five. And remember, Florida State was a slight favorite in this game. They're showing they should have been a big favorite. Florida State leading Clemson 48-7 as we continue the Dr. Pepper road to the championships. Remember, a year ago, Florida State put 49 points on Clemson, 35 straight in the second half. Florida State in that game in Tallahassee had 667 yards of offense. Tonight they've got 467. But more importantly, their defense has held Clemson to only 200 yards here tonight. They'll take a knee. It'll be an opportunity to remind you that the chase for the Sprint Cup heads to Talladega Super Speedway where anything can happen. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Talladega presented by Five Hour Energy. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson. And a terrific duel for that Chase Championship. Four points separate Kenseth and Johnson. And Talladega is one of the more exciting tracks on that circuit to watch. So and off to number 22, DJ Dang, Go ahead, Irving. We talked earlier about Jeremy Pruitt, the Alabama secondary coach for the last three years for Alabama. Just can't say enough about not just Jeremy Pruitt. First time he's had a chance to be a coordinator at a big-time program. But Charles Kelly coaching the linebackers. He was at Georgia Tech last year. Salson series working with the defensive ends. Odell Hagens uh, has been around for a long time, 20 years. He's been a defensive line coach for Florida State. This entire staff put together a great game plan for Taj Boyd. DJ Howard was the uh, running back as Taj Boyd hits Humphreys. And we can check in and the drive chart shows you the story. Those are the last six drives against that no defense that we told you about. And this is an offense that uh, can score a lot of points. That's, that's impressive. Watkins on the outside. We're talking about the staff and these numbers, but we also got to talk about these players. You and I, everybody up here in this booth, has been marveling at the LaMarcus Joyner. Remember, he's 5'8", 190 pounds, just a ball of muscle. His leadership and his playmaking ability tonight had a lot to do with the way this game unfolded. 
second and four, and here's Howard. And uh, let's check in from Orange Line with Heather. There's a penalty flag, but uh, go ahead, Heather. Well, speaking of Lamarcus Joyner, I just learned some great Florida State lore. So Bobby Bowden started this tradition. They call it the Sod Cemetery. Now it's reserved just for big road wins. They designated this a Sod game. So before the game, they elected a Sod captain. Now, ironically, the captain tonight, Lamarcus Joyner. How perfect. <laughs> so after the game, Joyner will actually go to the end zone and subtly extract, well, not so subtly now that I'm telling you guys all about it, but he'll take a piece of sod, they'll take it back to Tallahassee and put it in the sod cemetery, which is right by the practice facility. They'll make a plaque for it. I guess there's tons of pieces of sod from big Florida winds, big road winds. I love it, guys. Indeed. And uh, Joyner also picked up that foul. And Howard, who has checked in, busts across the 20-yard line. So D.J. Howard, a junior from Lincoln, Alabama, the ball carrier for Clemson. A little foreshadowing by picking him to be the young man who would end up getting the sod if they had the win. Exactly. Howard has stopped on that play. We come down toward the 11-minute mark. Well, it'll be interesting how they sort out tomorrow. Alabama winning big. You've got Oregon with an early lead on Washington State. And of course, you've got the Knowles primed to jump here. And that battle will begin for the top two spots dropped. I don't know how you feel, Brent, but I think there's Alabama, Oregon, Florida State. And then there's a significant drop to everybody else as we sit here right now. This team gets thrown into the ring with Alabama and Oregon. This has been a dominating performance and it's really been a dominating six games this year for Jimbo Fisher. You can't say that about any of these other teams that are up there. Zach Brooks checks into the backfield. Dancing. We picked up a couple yards with Jones making another stop for the Knowles. One thing Jeremy Pruitt learned from Nick Saban, even though you're up 48 to 7, take pride in that red zone. They're still blitzing. They're still coming after Taj Boyd. Taj Boyd in a foot race. And it's complete for a first down right along that sideline. And he slipped it into Jordan Leggett's hands. It's a heck of a catch by Leggett. There's Joyner. He gets the one foot down. He's got to finish the process of the catch. Meanwhile, in baseball, the Red Sox are closing in on an American League championship. A couple innings away, leading the Tigers 5-2 in game six. The Cardinals are the winner there. What do you have there, Brent? You know, the National League, but it's going to be a great World Series. The Red Sox are a good, good baseball team. I'm a Reds fan. I just tip my cap to the organization of the St. Louis Cardinals. It doesn't matter who they lose. The players go, La Russa goes, and that's that program, that, that franchise just, no it's, it's the DNA of their program. So impressive. Incomplete. See, you can see the eyes and the questions from the true freshman receiver still maturing. He, he's, he's a future superstar here, but he's still trying to get on the same page with Taj Boyd. And after that that throw, he kind of looked back. What, what left? But back? Okay. Taj Boyd will earn his degree here at Clemson before the first of the year, and then after the bowl game, he will head on out to one of the camps. This one probably in California to get ready for the NFL Combine. Inside run for Taj, a little short of the goal line. You'd think you were in Tallahassee. <laughs> it does feel like that. Knowles 
did oh. not want to yield another touchdown, and they stop him at the one-yard line. And you know who made the play right in the middle of it? Telvin Smith. He and Join are the leaders of this defense. Nobody picked him up at the second level. He was just sitting there waiting, and he makes the play. There's a lot of pride in the line for any defense. But especially in a game where you're up 48 to 7, you want to have a chance for a goal line stand that stopped them from scoring and Telvin Smith make sure that they get it. I believe I'd like to be in Tallahassee on November 2nd. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by the new windows. Saturday Night Football, presented by Windows, brought to you by the new windows. Cadillac and Silver Star Ultra Headlights from Sylvania. We've had all access to these two schools all week, courtesy of Wells Fargo, from the training table to the classroom to the locker room. You see Chad Morris on the right, the fine offensive coordinator of Clemson, had a tough night here against his defense, only able to put seven points up, trailing 48 7, still 8.40 to go. And Jameis Winston is lined up, coming out from his own one-yard line. Abram and Freeman are behind him. Freeman was close to not getting out, but I think he did. So their last 40-point home loss back in 1976, 41 nothing to the Dogs. Dabu Sweeney wants to make sure that this game doesn't impact him next week and the week after. That was a great face. Says it all. It tells the entire story. When you look at that fan who's so disappointed, many of the fans here have already left the stadium. From the end zone, lobs it out. O'Leary wide open. 40, midfield. 40, 35, 30, 20, 10 down at the five. I'll tell you one thing, he's faster than Jack ever was. <laughs> How about this call, by the way? Two tight ends up big, slipped the tight end out. The safety's out of position. And you're right, Nick O'Leary gets out in the open field. He was highly recruited. Almost every school in the country wanted Nick O'Leary as a tight end out of Dwyer in South Florida. He turns on the Jets. Clemson fortunate to catch up to him. 94 yards. That helps before Johnson runs him down. That gets Winston up to 444 yards passing. <laughs> he said, come on, aren't you going to take me out for a play? You're going to make me stay out here? Hopefully they try He's to get gas. down. What a night for O'Leary. He's looking 34. He said, you got to free run, my friend. Slide him into the corner. <laughs> First and goal now for the Knowles. Freeman, second down and goal. Of course, you know, you're running into that situation here with seven minutes to go where where there's a lot of fans, Florida State fans, who are saying, you know, let's get some of these guys off the field. You know, we've got we've still got a season ahead of us. And uh, when, when are we going to rest Winston? Uh, when do we get the running backs out? You run into this, the game's over. You, know, you got to be a little bit careful now when you hit the last six minutes of a ball game. I'm sure that Winston wants to stay in here. Wrestled him down. So Getting a kick out of Nick O'Leary at the top here. Remember that long run he had? He's not taking any plays off. That was Vic Beasley. He tried to push back. Beasley ends up making a play, but he is gassed and still out there trying to do his job. <laughs> 94 yards will do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's still in recovery mode. <laughs> Freeman 
again right straight ahead. And that'll bring up fourth and goal. Bobby Bowden has to be sitting home watching this and very proud of this team and what they've done. Yeah, you know, um, he said some very nice things about Winston. He sure did. He said, he said this week that he could wind up being the best quarterback they've ever had, and they've had some good ones. They sure have. Right they sure have. Look at the eyes. What a leader. You just can't believe he's a freshman. Yeah, that's what's hard to believe. I, mean, I totally agree with you. It's like, he, it's like he's a junior or a senior. It's like he's been out here in this environment his whole life. Born to do this. And oh, by the way, don't try to go from first to third on a single against him either. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take a break. Then we'll wrap it up. Florida State well on our way to a signature win this season. Back in Clemson for the final 445. Florida State giving Clemson a spanking. It's 48-7. 20 yard field goal attempt coming up here for Roberto Anwayo. And he's had a good night kicking. Knocks down the field goal. 51 points here tonight. For Jameis Winston and the Knowles. We want to thank everybody from the truck and all of our cameramen and all the folks who helped us with this production here tonight. It's been a grand effort. Nice going, gang. Monday Night Football on ESPN. It'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the winless New York Giants. Josh Freeman, who was picked up from Tampa after Tampa turned him loose, is going to start for the Vikes. Might want to tune in and see what kind of a new look that team will have. And, of course, the Giants... They'll take any old kind of a win. That's your Monday night, and here's your little pooch. Again, fielded on the 20-yard line. They've kept the ball out of the hands of the speedsters, and that was Leggett again. And let's check in with Robert Flores. Robert, uh, back here <laughs> with the... Uh, <laughs> and, and if you ask me about... How about Florida State? Yeah, they were pretty good tonight. Yeah, they're, 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 other than that, we know nothing. I, um, was, uh, I was listening intently yeah. to his update from the West Coast, you know? Yeah. He did a good job, second down and five. This is the thing about Jameis Winston that you're going you're gonna, to you're really like. Is his night's over, and he starts to go around the, make the rounds with the team. There's O'Leary who had the big touchdown catch. He's like, oh, you know, almost, almost, but he makes his rounds. He goes to all the offensive linemen. There's his fullback. There's his receivers. Makes his way over to some of the big linemen. But he's reaching out, and that's that leadership that is so unique with him. Cole Stout has checked in, so Taj Boyd's night is also over and a very very disappointing night for Taj Boyd and uh, Jameis Winston and the 51 points tonight that is the most points scored by any opponent at Death Valley as the Knowles come in here ranked number five favored by a field goal and they put 51 points on the board. And any defensive coordinator Getting ready to take on the Knowles. They got their hands full with Jameis Winston and the rest of this attack. Offensive line was impressive tonight. Stout picks up the first down. We got a long way to go, Brent. This is the best Florida State team I've seen since going back to 2000 when they ended up getting to the national championship. If they can execute the way they did tonight on both sides of the ball, it's the best they've looked in 12 or 13 years when they got to the championship game. No question. They had to deal with Michael Vick that night in New Orleans, and uh, Vick and Virginia Tech made a great run at him. And Peter Warwick had a pump return for a touchdown, and the Seminoles won a national championship with Bobby Bowden as a coach, and they've been trying to get back to that level ever since. Missed out. Drops it off now to Zach Brooks. 
Winston's going to get a lot of the attention, and he should. But I think you and I and anybody who's watched this game, you got great leadership on the other side of the football. You have seniors that have been around and suffered through some really tough times. It makes this team, I think, very focused and, and very hungry. Third down and three. Final couple of minutes here, just dropping the ball off now to Zach. He picks up the first down. And Coming up after the game, stay tuned for the Ford wrap up with Robert Flores. Well, uh, Lee Corso might want to call up Bill Murray and uh, have a, a second match between those two, and they might want to take that spear to Murray this time. <laughs> Corso's. Uh, Almost came home. <laughs> yeah, stop this fight. Okay. Well, he got the best of him. I, I there he comes. By the way, Here he comes now. Watch this. This was so had no idea. Ad lib. No idea. Murray this throws him down on the grass. Now watch this beautiful wrestling slam. And now watch this. And we're like, what's he doing? I what love it. I got I can give another one. Okay. All right, then he, then he takes the spear. Now, now, then he tries to help him up. Get but that gives spear him. out of here. This. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he drops it off down to Bryant. Bryant, he's got good speed. And out of bounds at about the 32-yard line here in the final. It's a very painful loss for Clemson, but they need to regroup because they've still got they've got some goals ahead of them. And uh, you know what? You, you pointed out with commercial, Herbie, that, that a loss like this can affect you for a couple of weeks if, you, if you're not careful. And they're on the road the next couple of weeks. They just, they've got to put this one behind them. This is one you might not even want to look at the film. Just move past it. Don't dwell on it. Try to get ready for the rest of the season at Maryland, at Virginia. They have Georgia Tech, the Citadel, and then a big one. Big rivalry game on the road in Columbia against South Carolina. This, is, this one stinks. I mean, they wanted this big stage, and the last thing they wanted to happen was 51 to 7. Absolutely. This one probably hurts even a little bit more than the licking that West Virginia gave them down in the uh, the Orange Bowl, I believe it was, a couple years ago, because this one's right here yeah. in Clemson. Most points an opponent's ever scored in Death Valley. Jameis Winston, the architect for the Knowles, the offensive line, and and uh, everybody, everybody on that team did a terrific job tonight. How ironic that Florida State's next game is North Carolina State because the next challenge for this team is going to be not to start to believe all the hype. Yeah, because here it comes. The yeah. hype is coming. Because remember last year they lost in Raleigh when they, they, they should have won the game? That's And Jimbo told us this week that's been part of the growth for this program. So you look at these games, the huge game is November 2nd. But all these are, are winnable. If they play the way they did tonight, I don't know if anybody on that schedule can hang with them. Well, we'll see what the Canes can come yeah. up with. That's a pretty good rivalry game. And then don't forget the Gators over there in Gainesville, even though they didn't, haven't played well this year. That, that too. I mean, that could be a track okay, game over all right. there, all right? I'll take your word for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying that? to sell some tickets. I got you, you know, Have you seen that Florida State offense? <laughs> Those are two I was going to die. You know, I, I was going to crown them as the uh, champions of Florida because I think they could beat Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no Just kidding, folks. I understand. No college team could beat that. UCF. Here. I got it. UCF. Very good football team. They might become your non-automatic, the non-qualifier, automatic qualifier that gets in. Big win over Louisville. George O'Leary, fine football coach there. Northrop yeah, in on the ball, did a good job. That's Reggie Northrop, but he's a sophomore from Jacksonville. Yeah, the Jimbo Fisher's challenge will be keep this team angry, keep them hungry, keep them humble. It's a great win. Pat him on the back, get ready for the next one. Stay angry if I'm Florida State. Bryant up in the air. Final 29 seconds. Waysom was the defender over there. Well, you have a lot of backups in the game. The Knowles are still trying to, they're yelling from the sidelines about trying to keep them out of the end zone.
Stout fires. And they did keep him out. That was Hopper, the receiver. They can still get a first down without having to, to score. It's not fourth and goal. It was 17 nothing when Clemson scored. Made it 17-7. And the Tigers haven't been able to score since. Again, over 30 some unanswered points, just like a year ago in Tallahassee. Stout dives for that end zone, battles his way in. So the junior from Dublin, Ohio, with a touchdown here for the Tigers. Dad's clips down. Played the National Football yep. League. Sure Kevin Taro knocks in the extra point. All right, 10 a.m. tomorrow, Sunday, NFL countdown. Get ready for all the day's games, the stories around the league. Ray Lewis will sit down. The Jets head coach Rex Ryan, who was once his defensive coordinator. Then you can set your lineups, catch fantasy football, 11 a.m. ESPN2, get your team ready. How many of you have got one Peyton Manning on your fantasy team? That's what a game, huh? Oh, what a season he's having. And then, uh, of course, that's going to be a great game. Uh, Peyton's going to go back yeah. in Indianapolis. It'll be the Broncos and the Colts. Well, so the tail of the tape of our two quarterbacks. And very, very much one sided there. The freshman, famous Jameis Winston. I think everybody will always remember the first time this freshman got on a big stage and how he performs. He's had that smile on his face since he got off the bus and walked into the stadium. Somewhere, somebody at Maryland is saying, we're not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> right. No doubt. One of the ground now. Knowles will bounce on that football. And great team effort. Yes, it was. Jameis Winston got a lot of the attention, but a great team effort. The two weeks to prepare. Jeremy Pruitt can't say enough about those defenders. They should be proud. Kelvin Smith, he did step up. We can't go tonight. So the young man is Jacob Coker from Mobile, Alabama. He'll take the final snap, and there you can see an embrace with Jimbo Fisher and six foot four inch Jameis Winston. Winston 22 of 34, 444 yards, three touchdowns, and another rushing touchdown. And some fine defensive efforts in there. Herbie talked about Telvin Smith, Lamarcus Joyner. They were outstanding all night long. Jameis Winston told me this week, he, as a team, they want to bring that swag back, that Florida State swag. Pretty good step tonight. Let's check in down below with Heather Cox and the winning coach. Coach, congratulations on the win. Believe it or not, this is the most points ever scored here in Death Valley by a Clemson opponent. What does that say about your team's ability to come and get a convincing work win here? We didn't realize that, but I'm just happy the way our kids have grown up. We've learned to play on the road in important games. And, you know, it's, we've grown, so we're, we're halfway there. we got another half the season to go, but I'm proud of the growth of what these guys have shown. Our assistant coaches did a tremendous job, and our players did a great job. And another offensive explosion tonight, Coach. What kind of impact has Jameis Winston had on your team? Well, I think he is, he brings us a, a confidence to our team, but the consistency with the old guys around him has really allowed him to 
football game tonight against a great offense. Speaking of that defense, you guys hit the ground running with that fumble recovery that turned into a touchdown. At what point did you know that this would be a special night? I, I, I say, you don't ever know till the fourth quarter or so because Clemson's so explosive and you're on the road. We've learned that we can't take our foot off the accelerator. And, you know, I'm just proud of our guys. I really am. we got a long way to go, though. We'll let you enjoy, Coach. We'll talk to Jameis right over your shoulder. Nice win, Coach. Jameis, congratulations on the win. All night long, people talking about how difficult it is to come into Death Valley and come away with a win. How did you play with such poise and confidence as such a young guy? Well, first of all, I just got to thank my Lord and Savior. But my team is so good. I'm so confident in my guys. And that man you just was talking to, I love him. I love him with all my heart. He called a great game. We played a great game. We were not scared. We came in confidence. And my offensive line blocked their tail off. My route receivers caught everything I threw. My running backs ran the ball. They played a great game. You played with so much poise and leadership. Before the game, you said you don't even know what the word nervous means when you're on the field. Where does that confidence come from? You always got confidence when you got a great team like that. We have, like, those guys are better. They've been there, done that. We knew that this was going to be a tough environment. But I told them, I said, guys, we're not worried about no noise because we're going to bring the no noise. Well, guess what, Jameis? A conversation has started tonight. It started upstairs with Brent and Herbie. It's across the country that you are in the thick of the Heisman conversation. How do you respond to something like that just six games in? I got to thank my team. I got to thank my team. If it, wasn't because, if, it, if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for Kenny Shaw, Rashad Green, Brian Stork, Cam Irvin, my whole team, Kevin Benjamin, if it wasn't for all those guys, Devontae Freeman, I mean, I could just keep naming. If it weren't for them, if it weren't for Coach Fisher giving me the opportunity, if it weren't for the man upstairs blessing me and blessing me with that team, it would not be there. Jameis, look at this. You've turned Death Valley into Tallahassee overnight. Well done. <laughs> hey, thank you. I'm trying to tell you, Florida State bringing that swag back. <laughs> Told you. He's the real deal, folks. They want to bring that swag back. There's no mistake years. about this young man. <laughs> and you can see the, uh, the crowd down on the field. Of course, it's it's legal here at Clemson. They let the fans come onto the field. Many of them are out there. And they've got friends with this other school. Yes, indeed, Herbie. He did bring bring the noise here tonight. Bring the noise, and that swag he's talking about is referring to those 14 years when Bobby Bowden had the Knowles rolling, and when they took the field, there was an aura. He's trying to create that aura. He and his teammates. What I love, Brent, is it's about him. He's deflecting. It's about my receivers. It's about my line. It's about my running backs. It's about my coach. Love to hear that from a young quarterback. It was 22 of 34 for 441 yards. He threw for three touchdowns and he ran for a fourth. And he also had the one interception, which you could say was about his only mistake of the night. He's looking for his parents. Searching for mom and dad. They're trying to get to it. <laughs> now he's got him. 51-14's our final. It was all Florida State. So now it is time for the Ford wrap up and what a day this has been in college football. We want to go to Robert Flores and he'll tell you all about the shakeup. Indeed, it was shakeup Saturday. So long everybody.